In this video, I'm going to share with you the process I use to acclimate corals. Hey, it's Carlin Haywood from Roster Reefs, a company dedicated to helping individuals and businesses get the most enjoyment out of their aquariums. If you're new to the channel, I cover widely recognized best practices to help all skill levels in the saltwater aquarium hobby achieve success. Let's dive into the topic of this video, which is how to acclimate corals. So I was recently at my local fish store and I picked up this beautiful gold Indonesian hammer. So I thought I would share with you the process I used to acclimate this coral to my aquarium. So here are the items that I use when I acclimate corals. Um, a couple of uh, brushes here. Um, I have some tongs, some scissors, coral dip, um, some glue as well, and then also a turkey baster. And then you'll need probably about two or three of these bowls. And then I have a, a drip line as well. Okay, so let's go over the first step of the acclimation process. So in general, uh, whenever you're acclimating any kind of livestock to your tank, you really want to reduce the amount of stress that animal will experience. So one thing that can really stress any saltwater livestock is wild swings in the water temperature. So what you want to do is you want to slowly acclimate the temperature that comes with the coral to match the temperature that's inside your tank. So generally speaking, most corals can be bought in these plastic bags, but some vendors may ship them in cups, but for the most part, you'll, you'll be buying them in bags. And so what you'll want to do is float that bag inside your aquarium to slowly build up that temperature or so, slowly cool um, that water temperature inside the corals bag to match what's inside your aquarium. So using my tank as an example, I keep my water at 78 degrees. Um, so let's say I purchase my coral and the water inside the bag cools to 76 degrees. So I like to float that unopened bag with the coral inside for about 20 to 30 minutes. So I'll place it in my aquarium and then that water inside my aquarium, which is at 78 degrees, will slowly warm the water inside the corals bag to match that 78 degrees and vice versa. If, if I had purchased it and it had risen to 80 degrees, my tank will uh, cool that water inside the bag back down to 78 degrees. Once I floated the bag inside my aquarium for about 20 to 30 minutes, then I cut it open and pour the contents, both the water and the coral into one of my containers. All right, so now we're moving on to step number two of the acclimation process. Another thing that you can do to help reduce the stress on the coral that you're adding to your tank is to use a process called drip acclimation. So what is drip acclimation exactly? All right, let's say for instance, for easy math, you purchased the coral and it came with a bag with one cup of water. So drip acclimation is where you slowly take out water from your aquarium and add it to that one cup of water until it becomes two to three cups of water. So all aquariums have characteristics known as water parameters. So what you want to be able to do is slowly transition the coral from living in its old water parameters to the, its new water parameters inside your aquarium. So the trick is you want to go slow enough where you gradually change those water parameters but because you're adding water to a smaller volume inside that container, um, it's susceptible to the ambient temperature in the room. So you also want to go fast enough where you're not risking dropping or raising the temperature inside your uh, acclimation container. So the next step is to dip your coral. I like to use Coral RX when doing my dipping process. If you purchase corals from a reputable vendor, you run less of a risk of getting unwanted pests, but it's still a good idea to dip your corals anyway. I use about a cap full of Coral RX for this amount of water. Uh, the recommended dosage is listed on the bottle, um, but then I let the coral sit in that water for about five to seven minutes, which will allow and give the medicine time to stun the pests. And then I can come in with a turkey baster and blow off those pests off the coral. If you're going to be placing the coral plug that you purchased uh, from the local fish store directly into your system, one additional good step to include in your acclimation process is to take a toothbrush and brush off that coral plug. Sometimes the pests will lay eggs on the coral plugs themselves and the next generation will survive the dip and make it into your aquarium if they're not brushed off before adding the plug to your system. 
Something that I like to do to greatly decrease the chances that the next generation of pests will make it into my system is to remove the coral from the plug that it came with and place it on a grow out ceramic tile before placing it into my display tank. If you've enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button to help support the page. And if you'd like to be notified every time I upload new content, hit the subscribe and bell notification button as well. And as always, keep doing your research. The legend Bob Marley says, it is better to know than to believe. See you next time.